This video is going to focus on the basics of congestive heart failure. Oftentimes patients hear congestive heart failure and they say, does this mean I'm going to be dead in a few weeks or a few months? And that's not true. All congestive heart failure means really is that the heart can't pump out as much blood to the body as the body wants. And there's multiple reasons people develop congestive heart failure. There's different types of congestive heart failure. I'm going to go over just an overview discussing this a bit. And then in subsequent videos, I'll talk a little bit more about how we treat the different types of congestive heart failure. So what are we talking about? Well, congestive heart failure is when the main pumping chamber or the left ventricle can't pump enough out to the body or right-sided heart failure is when the right ventricle can't pump, pump enough blood to the lungs. So who gets left-sided heart failure? Who gets right-sided heart failure and why? Well, there's two reasons blood can't get pumped forward in general. Either the heart is too weak, so the heart's trying to pump, but it doesn't have the strength to pump blood forward, and that's what we call systolic congestive heart failure, or the heart gets too stiff. So the heart's like a sump pump in the basement almost. Your sump pump, the well fills up with water, and then the sump pump pumps the water out. The heart's a little bit different though, because the heart has to actively suck blood into that chamber, so the heart relaxes to suck the blood in, and then it pumps the blood out. As we age, the heart muscle gets a little bit stiffer. If people have high blood pressure for a long period of time, if they're overweight, those things tend to make the heart muscle stiffer, which for a bodybuilder might be great, but if you ask a bodybuilder to put their hands over their heads, the guys that are really muscular don't have the flexibility to put their hands up. They may be buff and they get it up to here, but they can't get their hands all the way up. And it's the same thing with the heart. The heart has to be able to relax and to squeeze out all the way. So when the heart is too stiff or too thick, that's what we call diastolic heart failure. And then what happens is the heart doesn't fill with enough blood. So even though it's strong enough to pump out everything that's in the chamber, the chamber never fills with enough blood to give the body what the body wants. Those are the two main subtypes of heart failure. There's also other types. There's valves. In a previous lecture, I've discussed valves inside the heart, such as the aortic stenosis or mitral regurgitation. It, what valves are, are like doorways that are supposed to open fully and allow blood to flow forward and then close once that chamber is finished pumping so that the next doorway can open. With aortic stenosis, for example, that's the valve that separates your heart from the rest of the body. If that valve is very narrow, you may have a normal strength heart muscle and you may have a heart that's pliable enough to suck in blood but when it's trying to squeeze, it's trying to squeeze out a very small orifice and it can't get enough blood forward to the body. With mitral regurgitation, the aortic valve opens fine, but the valve behind that is the mitral valve. So what happens is when blood comes from the left atrium to the left ventricle, the mitral valve opens, but then when the left ventricle pumps, your aortic valve opens, your mitral valve, however, goes backwards, so blood flows from the left ventricle back into the left atrium. If the body is asking for five liters of blood going forward, your heart that's pumping pumps some blood forward, but some of that blood goes backwards. So once again, the body doesn't get enough blood that it's asking for, even though your heart muscle is doing everything that the heart muscle itself should. So valvular problems can also cause these issues. There are also non-heart related issues. If patients are on dialysis and they have fistulas, or patients are born with fistulas that connect the arteries and the veins, what happens is much blood or a good amount of blood goes from the artery to the vein directly and not to the tissue. So the heart's pumping out as much as it should and oftentimes pumping out much more than it should, but the body itself isn't getting the blood flow because a lot of that is going straight through the fistula. So it gets pumped out to the artery, goes right back into the veins and doesn't provide oxygen, which is the main goal of the blood to the rest of the body. And that's what we call high output heart failure. There's other causes of high output heart failure. If somebody has a very low blood count or they're anemic, they can pump out a lot of blood, but if there's not enough red cells to carry enough oxygen, once again, the body doesn't get enough blood flow. So this is an overview. The following videos, I'll focus specifically on systolic and diastolic mainly because valvular problems were separate videos that I've previously posted how we treat it as physicians, how we diagnose it, and what patients should be looking out for. I hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully you enjoy the systolic or diastolic videos if you're a patient and that's what you've been told you have.
Have a good afternoon.